Welcome, everyone, to episode 95 of One Hour, One Decision, 1H1D. I am Chris. And I am Tom. And we take 60 minutes and play a random game on Xbox Game Pass and decide, ooh, is it ultimate play the game or is it rare? Oh, I didn't even know those two things were the same thing, but I do now. (laughs) They really are. This week, we're going to be talking about Jetpack Refueled by Ultimate Play the Game originally. But then Rare came in and did this number and did a little remaster for us. It's magic. It's it's magic. It really is. And it came out way back in March of 2007. We're playing an Xbox 360 game. here, An Xbox 360 arcade game. Yeah, yeah, this is really this is I think this is our first right our first arcade game. It's got to be it's from the time of when there were it wasn't a disc game, but in the time of discs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was a pretty, pretty monumental around that time to get like these little micro games, so to speak, and um, be able to download it and play it and have a good time on your console. Yes, Uh, Tom. How big was this on your on your playthrough? I'm just curious. Well, it w- it would fit on a CD-ROM, uh, 503 megabytes. Wow. Okay. This is a first, everyone. This game was a whopping zero on my computer because I played this on the cloud. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Our our revolt our. Our roles are reversed. This is our Freaky Friday moment right here. Yes. So it's pretty cool. It was pretty cool to be able to try a game on the cloud while uh, while we did this. And I was able to actually stream this game on the cloud, Ooh. unlike you. <laughs> so that was... Well, you know, the important. PC is a more impressive piece of technology, I suppose. It is. It is. I, I mean, just... Swiss just Army knife there. of things, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, but Twitch has got to get their ducks in a row here. But anyway, what kind of game is this? I have arcade shooter, but you went a kind of a different route. Yeah, I mean, yours, I mean, it is an Xbox Live arcade game. So that was actually absolutely correct. I just put 2D platformery bullet hell. Yes. It gets it gets pretty bullet helly. It It really does. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. But uh, let's talk about that game loop. I have collect fuel to advance while blasting endless waves of enemies. That was much more descriptive what I said. I just said refuel refuel your jetpack. I mean, it's... you're not even refueling a jetpack. You're re- refueling a rocket. You're building and then true. refueling a rocket. That's true. Your jetpack is is not really being refueled. It's what you use to go get the fuel to fuel your rocket. It's true. Oh, well. Maybe in this world, that thing you're building is a jetpack. It it could be. Because, because the jetpack in this game is a jetpack without the K. It's true. And the refueled has an extra L because, you know, <laughs> if we're going to drop letters in one word, we're going to put them extra letters into another word. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, Newton's law, I guess, or something like that happens here. In yeah. the words. Letters can neither be created nor destroyed, only <laughs> moved between words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to what we like, though, about this game. Huh? Um, I liked, from the jump, you had the ability to play either the retro game or the new version, the, the refueled yeah. version. Um, now, of course, a lot of modern remakes do this, you know, Pac-Man did it, Galaga did it, mm-hmm. right? Like it's, it's not uncommon to see this, but yep. I, I like that it's there, um, because it allows you to kind of compare the two, which oh, I yeah. think is important. Um, and, uh, I think having compared the two, I think this new version does capture the spirit of that original game, which, you know doesn't get lost in in the mm-hmm. uh, conversion to a a newer remake yeah absolutely 
um i i liked that uh like to your point i agree that that there's two modes in single player like you said uh, the original and the and the re- uh, modernized version i like that it was like honestly you you started the game and it was like straight to the point there was nothing there was it was just very very much an arcade game like you jump right into the action there's no ridiculous cutscene or anything to read it's just hey go do the thing that we're supposed to be doing here uh, i also like the fact that in the menus that there's a little history lesson on rare i don't know if you got a chance to do yes that. yes yes and that's that was my little uh reference there at the beginning yeah it's yeah understanding that ultimate you know gave birth the or rise to rare to rarely yeah it was it was pretty cool i didn't realize that they had did a a little name change there but you know good for them whatever they could do this game was pretty challenging too yes but it was easy to start playing it yeah it, it, it kind of reminded me of mega man in that way where it's like they're not a whole lot of buttons right you just mm-hmm. you just start the game they don't really give you a whole lot of this is what you're supposed to do right um <laughs> And they just say, oh, there you go. You know, eh, you die a few times. You'll figure out the buttons, I guess. You know, right, <laughs> right. Tutorials. We don't need no stinking tutorials. Yeah, this, here. Is, this was a different time, you know. Yeah. Um, and I appreciated that you can swap the controls if you didn't like the layout. I didn't know that. Oh, OK. Well, we'll talk about so that. that, I think, <laughs> coming up. Yeah. Sounds like. Yeah. yeah. I uh yeah so but I did like also that they added in the in the um I guess the the refueled version of the game the modernized version of the game that um that you could you that you could you could start at checkpoints like yes as you progress through the game there is um like if 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 no one's ever really played the game you, the the first level that you start off with you have to build your rocket ship your, yes. your, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So you have to put the three parts together and then you have to refuel it. Yes. And in, in the succession levels, the, the levels that come right after it, you're using that same rocket and now you're just simply refueling it. Yeah. Which usually, I think it was about six times, six f- like fuel cells that you had to throw in there. Yes, yes. It was six fuel cells, yes. Okay. And, and then after that, the way they change it up is like you get a new ship that you have to then put together again and kind of repeat the process rinse repeat right in that sense so yes and uh, each time you get a new rocket if you die you can start from that new rocket right exactly so it's nice that you're not starting all the way over like i would assume most of these arcade games back in the day would be super punishing yes um so you know the little the little modern twists in that sense were appreciated yes so and and I've got to weigh in and say that I thought that making that progress felt good, especially mm. like when you were up against something, it was hard, but you figured it out. You know, you navigated through it, you yes. know, that that sense of like beating the unbeatable, like it feels good yeah. when you accomplish those sorts of things. That's that's why Absolutely. all of these games have, you know, that that kind of reward, you know, like victory is a reward in and of itself kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the old way um mm-hmm. but i i do want to as we segue into uh the dislikes here mm-hmm. um i do wish you got better rewards because there really mm. aren't there are hardly any rewards in in the in the modern sense of the reward yeah i, I you're right and yeah i think during my playthrough i only got like maybe two achievements I was like, it was, I was like, what the heck else do you have to do to get these rewards? Because it was like, I was collecting everything in the levels. I was, you know, I, I was, I was getting higher and higher scores. I was like, what, what else do you need from me? Right. It seemed like a very, there's, there, you know, there, it, there's, there's not much else to the game, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Which speaking of which, if we're going to our dislikes. Yes. I'm going to say the game did get pretty stale pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised like it was funny because there there was a point um 
while I was playing, I'd say like the 20 minute mark where I looked up, like, oh man, I still have this much time. But then like, I kind of put my head down. I was like, okay, let's, let's just try to crank through as much of this game as we can. And it felt a little bit faster at that point when I was like, like back in my, you know, grade school days of just like, I have infinite time. Let me burn through a game kind of thing. And then like, uh, then the time actually passed. It was kind of weird. It was like a, like a shift in, it it was a shift in uh, a mentality or like the thought process there. Or it's like just just try to play the game and enjoy it. So that was interesting. Um, uh, what about some stuff that you didn't like about this game? Uh, well, you touched on it earlier. There's no tutorial or a- listen. I understand not doing a tutorial for an for an arcade <laughs> game, but like right. not even like a flash of what the buttons are. Like, right? Come on, guys. Um, and that while it was standard in the olden times to do that. You yeah. know, you had a booklet or something that wa- walked you through what the buttons mm-hmm. were. Um, mm-hmm. Nowadays, I think it's necessary. I, I don't think you can make a modern game and not kind of walk people through what the controls are. And I think if you do, it, it's it's bad. It's bad design. You, sh- you, you right. need to. If you're not going to give me a paper manual that's going to lay it out for me. <laughs> you, you need to at least put it up on the screen before I start, you know, mm-hmm. or walk me through it as it happens, you know. Yeah, I mean, you you did mention that you can swap the controls, which is, yes. I guess, kind of nice. I didn't realize that. And then I played through this and I thought the controls were a bit frustrating because. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, like when you when you think about it, it makes sense because you use the triggers to use your thrust because then you can adjust your thrust in that way. But I felt like there was a lot of times I was flipping it in my mind like this was the sh- like this. The trigger button was to shoot. Mm-hmm. And then the um, the face like the the face buttons were what I was be yes. using to jump. So and, I was like, oh. you you could have made it that way. Yeah, I so <laughs> I mean now I know. But um, the other thing, I, it's not necessarily a a, a, far, a fault of the game, but Game Pass itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was surprised that it was because like. You know, we 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 talked about the game in our previous episode and saying, okay, cool. I didn't have to download it, so I was like, okay, this is interesting. And then when I tried to go look for it, it was a bit of a chore to actually look for it. Like if you go to game like the Game Pass app and you type in on the search bar Jetpack or Field, it won't find it. And then oh. like so you have to like go to the particular section being the cloud gaming section and then use that search bar. To find it. So it was like, I just wish their search was a little bit more universal. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So it was, it was a little, it was a little difficult getting to the game. Um, but you know, after that, it was, it was like uh, to kind of go back to the likes. I was just really surprised how quickly the game started up. I mean, it's a small game, but still, like, it was just cool to be like, I want to play this game. It launched, and I was, I was in You're off to the, the races. Yeah, had the 360 logo loading in and all that stuff. It was pretty cool. So it was uh, got those nostalgia feels for, I guess, a couple of generations right there. So yeah, um, yeah. What, anything else you want to bring up about? Uh, I, I have a couple more. Um, yeah, I think there was some art. What I would call artificial difficulty, where mm. like an enemy spawns right on top of you, oh. and it's like this is just ridiculous. You know, especially since it there's no health bar. So it's one of those like if an enemy touches you, you die situation. Yep. So like, OK, if an enemy spawns on top of me, but I could take a couple of hits, that's not such a big deal. Right. But it does matter if if they're going to spawn on top of me and I die instantly. Like, that's not cool. I, the I don't think like that was I, I thought that was interesting is like I, I noticed this a couple of times. If I was carrying something. And a enemy hit me. I didn't die. Like I would drop the item. Oh. And then so it's almost like it gave you kind of a shield when you did that. And I I I don't know, I can't confirm this, but I felt like if I hit the jetpack, like if if there was an enemy coming from behind and I hit my jetpack, my thrust up. If the fire catches them, it killed them. I again, I I I, I swear it happened to me a couple of times. Okay. I'm like, what the heck? Okay, so you can use your jetpack as a as a weapon. I was like, it's kind of neat, but I don't know if that was 
like supposed to happen or whatnot. Like, I don't know if I found a bug, but uh, well, sp yeah. speaking of questionable design decisions, yeah. um, so that scatter shot uh, oh, attack is a hundred percent the best. Like, I don't know the one that why three, three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, that, the, that the screen is, clearer. You can point it. You can point it down. That's the only gun that you can point down. So, okay. So once I've gotten that gun, right? Because yeah, if you accidentally pick up a weapon pickup, <laughs> it cycles back to a crappy weapon. Oh man! It was why? Why? Like, why would you do that? I thought for the longest time, I thought the pickups, each pickup was a different weapon type. And then I, until I realized it was like the the canister with the red, mm -hmm. um, the right rounded corners um, on it. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then so yeah, to your point, I was like, oh, this this weapon's awesome. I'm like, I'm just destroying things. And then I got the stupid L gun. I was like, oh, this one sucks because like there there was enemy types that would start to like like go like track you better yeah. and then you're like oh forget this like i can't i can't shoot him with that stupid l gun yes so. it reminded me of the poison mushroom in mario where mm. it's like oh it's a power-up this will make things better but it actually makes things worse <laughs> <laughs> like if there's an like, even optimal if there's an optimal weapon for the character yeah. why would you put a pickup on the screen that makes it less optimal it doesn't make any sense want to mess with you. Well, it sucks. I mean, like I, at least like Contra, right? When there was pickups, they had like a, a little, like a, a letter on there that would indicate what kind of weapon it was. It was like, this is like just a random grab bag. And, and most of the time it is pretty crappy. And I thought like, as you pick them up, they would like enhance them in some way. No, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing of that sort. It was just, you just pick whatever we, weapon type that we give you. and you'll like it until you get the next one. So, yeah, I agree with you. That was that's that was pretty frustrating. To um yeah, and especially if like I had to go pick up fuel and the fuel was sitting on top of one of these things, <laughs> which that and happens. I, that I happens. already had the weapon that I liked and I'm like yeah. I can't pick up the fuel without switching to a l inferior weapon. The other thing I found really annoying was um especially in the modern version when the fuel is like we have to go track it if there's like a million other pe like characters on the screen and that thing is flashing, it is like impossible to see what the hell you're what, what what you're doing because you're you're trying to survive, right? You're trying to get to that fuel cell, but then there's a million things just trying to kill you at the same time. So it's like, and you're trying to shoot them all, and you know the 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 little wave that pops out of it oh, can sometimes yeah. hide sometimes hide an enemy, and then you're like, okay. Well, that was that sucks. So that was frustrating. Yeah. Any other thoughts that you want to bring up here? Um. So speaking speaking of the the frantic nature of it, I did feel like thir like thirty minutes of playing this game. Like once you got past the first couple of levels, once you got to the yeah. later levels, like it felt like I had been playing it forever. Um, <laughs> because it's. Because it's so frantic, because yeah. you know, it, 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 you don't really get a chance to breathe. So mm -hmm. it's like you finish a level. There's no cutscene. There's, you know what I mean? Like what? what uh, the rocket I'm, takes off, right? Right. And then you're like back, back in this thing, and then the, the thing's yeah. filling up with enemies again, and it's like it just feels like there's all this tension building, and there's no release <laughs> of no. the tension. None whatsoever. And no yeah. real chance yeah, to have, breathe. In you have like levels. five seconds. And maybe, maybe when it was on the 360 and, you know, your crappier hardware, you had a little bit of a loading time, a little bit more of a loading time. I don't know. Maybe that that's kind of what it was. Oh, so man. This, imagine, imagine if these, like the enemies are like tied to clock speed or something like whoa, silly like that. that would be sick. And that's, and that's why these things are so <laughs> full with enemies. Like the game should be a lot easier, but we're playing it on such <laughs> more powerful hardware. It's like, we never knew computers going to be at this high. It's like, we swear. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So, uh, that's, that's, that's a good point. And I, like I mentioned already, this game is on cloud, so you can play this on your, um, pretty much anywhere at this point, which is pretty cool. How long to beat says this game takes about four and a half hours to beat. Wow. Yeah. That seems pretty long. It does. 
for what it is, it seems like a very long time. Yeah, yeah, it does because like you know you you take one of those like Ninja Turtle games or something like that, like one yeah. of those like arcade style games. You could beat those games in like less than an hour, and, and yeah. then this, you know that this thing would take four and a half yeah. hours. Wow! I guess That's... there are a lot of levels. It might be, um, but Tom, we got to find out. Are we uh, keeping this game or jettisoning it? Jettisoning it out of this world. Uh, but before we get to that, we wanted to let you know about a spectacular sponsor, Winner Winner. Winner Winner is a live arcade claw machine game available on Android and iOS, and it's 100% skill-based. Trust me, if you see me play my games, you know I'm not that great, and I still have won games on my first try. There's hundreds of prizes even featuring gaming merch from Nintendo. Pick your prize from choices in your particular game, or bank your earnings with tickets to redeem any other prize you want from their wide selection. And for all you lovely people listening or watching our show, you can get bonus tokens on your first app token purchase. Download and create your account, then use the link in the episode's description to enter promo code DALE after you sign in. Check it out. It's Clawsome. Well, okay. I, I want to start by saying I'm glad we landed on this, you know, that it was random. Um mm-hmm. Because I've never played Jetpack, right? Mm-hmm. I've never played the original. Um, so it let me try out a retro game that I've never played. Um, yeah. That said, I have no plans to play this remake <laughs> or that original game ever again. Like, I yeah. played it. Okay, I know what it is now. Uh, I'm right. Done. Right. It was a nice, nice history lesson. Yes. So I, th- I, learned, I learned cool stuff. And I'm done. Yeah, I. Um, how about you? Uh, that I, you know, one thing we forgot to mention: this game has multiplayer too. I don't know how that works. I don't know if anyone plays it multiplayer, but I, it is interesting that there's that point. So it's probably just uh, taking <laughs> turns, like the yeah. old days of multiplayer. <laughs> oh man. Ugh. Well, for me, I think I got what I needed for my hour on this game. Uh, to your point as well, like I appreciated. Kind of, you know, this is this is kind of the start of the video game life, right? And uh, uh, but you know, I appreciate it, but I am leaving the stranded on one of those planets at this yeah. point. I am done. I'm done with this game. Um, I, uh, no, no more collecting fuel. Just leave no the rocket fuel. there, and I don't have to uninstall anything, which is great. I'm happy about that. It's true. So, well, so, at least it doesn't take up a lot of space if you need you did install it. Fair, fair point. Yeah, 700 megs is is nothing at this point. So, yes. but those are our thoughts. Let us know what you think of this game. Follow us and say hello on Twitter at tc1h1d or shoot us an email at tc1h1d at outlook.com. Check out our next streams on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 1h1d. And if you're watching this podcast on YouTube, send us a comment down below and we'll try to read and respond to them. That's our that's our promise. Yes. Which but, I, I think I've broken, but that's okay. <laughs> before we let these fine people go, we need yeah. them to know something important. And, and we need to know something important, which is uh, what do we play next? We we do, but we also have to mention that we are part of the QTV network, aren't we? Oh, yes. And uh, that too. And yeah. If, if, you, if you do like gaming podcasts, be sure to check out Quit the Build, a weekly gaming news podcast. Or to see the whole new, whole fancy lineup, check out quitthebuild.com slash network. And yes, Tom, we do need to let them know what we're playing next, don't we? So surprise me button. Tell us what we're playing next. Here we go. I hope it's not a 360 arcade game. (laughs) It's not. Hooray. It is Dicey Dungeons. Oh, no, it's a card game. (laughs) Oh, no, it's a card game. Hey, you know what though? A lot of people really love this, so yeah. well, we got to give it a, a lot fair of shot. We've we've played a lot of games that people have loved, and also we haven't loved them either. So that's, yeah, well, you know, that's that's I'm, besides. I'm trying to look for the silver linings here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So, Dicey Dungeons will be the next game that we'll be playing here. Um, episode 96. We're getting there. Hundred. We're getting there. Closing so, in. Closing in on that. 
uh, ever so elusive number 100. But thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into this episode, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.